okay so let's get started uh, this is the document guys so i think um, as per yesterday's request i just modified few of them so on a daily basis i will be pushing some changes so always keep up to date uh, whether you clone this particular repo or whether you fork this particular report it's up to you clone in the sense again you need to pull on a daily basis okay so whatever mechanism you use so you have to uh, be up to date with this document or daily basis you can open the document link actually okay in the browser so that would be the proper way so here you can see even i gave you the what is that okay how to create a sample nginx web container web app container here I explained what is this exactly and then i gave the command so it is like crystal clear uh, i think you cannot expect more than this actually so it is uh, written in a proper way uh, so like what is the for what situations what are the commands we have to use so how to access application nginx created above to ensure it's working so how will you verify that your application is working for that i gave you a few scenarios okay and then how to get ip address with the shortcut command yesterday we have seen like this right so for that we have a shortcut command uh, it is written here actually okay so which will give you this particular ip address of a container just you have to replace your container name that's it okay how to expose container outside the docker host machine or with the docker host ip address i told you right like yesterday how to use a port forwarding for your container so these are the steps which are written like to understand what is this concept and the uh, command how to achieve that okay how to access container application after port forwarding so how will you do that? how will you access now okay you did a port forwarding how will you access it now so this is how it is written here okay so in this way how to clean up a running container in a proper way so stop the running container and then remove it you can remove the running container forcefully but it is not recommended as best practice okay so they, these are the things which i have already written over there um yeah so that's it now uh, there will be another documentation which i will be adding today uh, advanced so there is another document called advanced uh, this i will talk about this uh, uh, today okay so today we are going to discuss this and more than this actually but right now i am just talking only few these two things apart from that i'll be talking other things as well okay uh, yeah so here if you read this particular documentation which is like docker container advanced okay advanced topic okay so advanced topic in the sense let's say if you see this output actually if i execute normally docker ps command actually i created two containers if you remember one is through ubuntu container sorry ubuntu image and through one is nginx image i created two containers so those two containers if you see right today they are in stopped state if you see hyphen a now we can see my container has been stopped and it is in exit code zero which means that successfully stopped now what is the problem the problem is whenever you boot say today i rebooted my system yesterday right so yesterday i stopped my mission and today i logged in so it is shut down and then i started right so when you are booting your operating system there will be docker service which will get started and everything will happen but the problem is this containers will never get started because it is it doesn't know how to start this particular containers okay so you have to tell you have to tell your containers that you need to start your containers at the boot time or if there is some failure i need to start my containers automatically so to do that there is an option called restart policy always if you want to see some options to the containers okay when you don't know something just give hyphen f and help for a docker containers okay then you can see so many options over here okay so we are using run right to create containers so run hyphen f and help sorry now you can see there are plenty of options okay in this you can see there are an option called restart policy so restart we have to pass some string restart policy applies when a container exits okay default no that's the reason we are not able to see the containers are getting started when your docker host mission has been started okay i want to achieve uh, something where whenever i reboot my system my containers are also should get started if it is shut down all the containers should, will obviously they will go down but when the my host machine is getting started 
automatically my containers once a docker service is running my containers are also should come up okay if you want that kind of feature let's try to create a container using that okay so docker uh, container container what are the option we need to pass so for that restart policy we can pass totally three values let me explain one by one okay so here you can see for the restart policy we can pass three parameters always on failure sorry never okay so we have these three parameters always in the sense will which will ensure containers are started by docker of any sort of failure or after node was started okay if there is a failure or if the node has been started means like rebooted or shut down and then now you are starting it in those cases uh, always it will try to start your container okay whatever the situation it is never in the sense it will not attempt to start a container if the container stopped due to the node uh, node down or failure okay so it will never attempt okay restart policy is never in the sense by default you will get never actually so that's the reason your container is not getting started okay now on failure in the sense if a container was exited with the code zero greater than zero actually now you are saying your containers has been stopped due to exit code zero okay it is a successful stop actually if apart from zero like one two three something like that greater than zero then it's a failure actually container had some failure so in those cases your containers will get uh, docker will try to start your containers okay on failure that is called as on failure restart policy so these are the three types of restart policies which we have so in this i will be using always okay let's see docker container run hyphen d hyphen hyphen name uh, nginx okay host name i'm not too much worried port forwarding is also i'm not worried so restart okay so restart policy always okay and then image name is nginx now the container has been created so if you want to see the ip address now anyway it will be running if you want to see the ip address just copy paste the command which i already gave you but let me try to execute from here what is the command docker container you can open the document guys from your browser okay so this github link if you want check and everything you can just open this document in the browser okay with this github link and see what i have added okay docker container inspect okay the container name is nginx and then i want to give some format uh, here double basis dot network settings dot ip address. you can see the ip address it is this because other two containers have been stopped right when this container is created the first ip address got assigned okay so you have to think about it now this is done okay now you can uh, call the ip so you will get automatically this copy and then paste you can see welcome to nginx so i gave a restart policy now oh my. did i give yeah i gave so restart policy i gave always now let me try to reboot my uh, node okay reboot my node i have totally three containers okay so you might ask a question what about the existing containers can we add a restart policy to existing containers yes we can do it okay so let me show you how to th do that and then we can reboot our system and see okay so for an existing container if you want to modify some parameters or if you want to add some parameters once it is created okay if you want to do that so it can be done okay so here i have written that particular scenario how we can add restart policy to an existing container not new one i'm clearly saying that statements not a new one okay yes we can add few changes to existing containers like cpu memory block io and restart policy as well these can be modified apart from this if you try want to modify let's say i forgot to give a port forwarding let's say for example i created a container uh, i forgot to give a port forwarding now if i want to add it i cannot do that okay once it is created you cannot do a port forwarding 
okay you have to do while creating container itself so there are few parameters which can be added and other parameters cannot be added so that's the reason i listed the parameters which can be added because there are few only that's the reason okay if you want to know i'll just show you how we can verify that we cannot add like port forwarding etc once a container was created which i told you that statement right we can we can we have to delete and recreate them with the proper parameters if you want to add those parameters you have to delete and recreate with them with the proper parameter that is the only choice we have okay so that's the thing now that's a statement which i want to make and here you can see the example sample output as well okay done so yeah let's copy docker container we have an option called update okay if you want to see what we can add just give help block io cpu memory pids actually and then restart policy okay only these parameters can be modified okay now let me add okay so docker i'll add for both the containers which are stopped okay so docker container update okay, update to whom to whom i need to update my container called ubuntu server is one what i want to update restart restart equal always okay and then for one of them i will add restart policy on failure nginx sorry Okay, done. Now let me reboot my system. So all the containers have been added with that. I'm not, see, this container is created and it is up and running. The restart policy is always. Now these containers are already stopped. Okay, they are exited with zero. I added the restart policy now. Now let me reboot my system and see what happens. Okay. I would have given init six, but I forgot to give it. It's okay. init 6 in the sense it is reboot if you give init 0 it is shut down okay it takes one minute still it is going on okay now i have logged in successfully let's verify the docker ps command now we can see two containers are up what about the next container so only two containers are up automatically four seconds ago you can see the statement the status of this particular containers are like up four seconds ago what happened to the third container which i gave on failure on failure in the sense this container was stopped due to some reason stopped with the proper reason exit code zero in the sense it is a successful stop that's the reason your container has been not tried or not attempted to start this particular container that is the reason of on failure. okay if there is a failure which means that if the exit code is greater than zero maybe application is down inside the container or something some script is not running properly inside the container and all so due to that reason if the container has been stopped then your exit code will be greater than zero it can be any number one two three depends upon the type of error actually uh, the code can be from zero to 132 actually so if it is greater than one till 132 it's a failure any sort of failure it is it's a failure okay in our point of view so any sort of failure is nothing but a failure so obviously now docker will try to start it okay but here the problem is the exit code is zero so that's the reason it has not attempted to start this particular container okay so that's on failure okay always in the sense whatever the reason it is whether you have stopped it intentionally or whether your uh, container was stopped due to some particular failures docker will try to start it 
okay so that's a major difference between them okay so now i hope i can clean up this okay all containers which i have so how nothing but there are some statements which are some small scripts which we have to write okay so if you want only the ids first of all i need only the container ids to delete okay so how to do that docker uh, container okay, ps hyphen aq it will list only ids of your container all containers now i will be writing a for command for i in for loop for i in this command should be executed then i will get one by one okay and then do to delete your containers docker container uh, remove is a command rm dollar i means whatever the input you are getting for each c first it will give you this output it will store in i variable this i variable i am passing here okay so this is how it is and then done uh, what happened force remove okay now you can see the statement over here there is one particular two containers which are running one container has been removed you can see here if you check now only two containers are there why because this container is already stopped so that's the reason it was removed but these two containers are running you cannot remove directly first you have to stop and then we have to remove if you want to remove we can do a force remove but it is not recommended which i've already told you so the best practice is docker uh, container container stop dollar i and then we have to do like this okay so it will stop and then it will remove you can see now now if you try to see this it's not there. okay so this i will add in the document no need to worry too much about this okay so this is how it is got it so yeah i will add so this into my yeah. uh good question so yes. if you give the uh, restart policy as always and uh, suppose mm -hmm. there was an error uh, in starting the container for example the ubuntu server that you did yesterday and okay. did not give the bash uh, at the input right so mm -hmm. what will happen is, and it, it failed so does it need, uh, it will attempt to start starting up right it will, it will keep start. on starting it will go in a loop right loop in this no 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 see always in the sense what are the reason of failure it is okay if something went wrong in the script inside the container or something it is stopped then obviously the container docker will try to start it again okay okay even if it then is it you have it will fail again isn't it sorry ah, again it will fail yeah that's it again it will fail again it will try to attempt okay yeah, so it will keep on going on, isn't it? That's that's what. I'm yeah, saying. it it keep yeah it keeps on it, it keeps on trying this particular uh, container to get started. If it is not, obviously it will keep on try and try and try. That's it. Okay. Uh, the policy is to always always in the sense try to attempt to restart that. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I, I don't know. I'm not able to hear actually properly. Can you come again? Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Can I, yeah. Am I audible? Yes. Yes. Better. Okay. I'm saying, uh, I'm saying that uh, what, what will happen if I will restart the Docker service, then what will happen? about the running container. Nothing, nothing will happen to your container. See, containers, if I restart, say, my containers are, oh, it is stopped, right? Okay. So what you are trying to say is like, if I have a Docker containers running, okay, my containers are running here, for example. Now, if I attempt to restart your service, nothing will happen. See, your Docker daemon responsibility is to create a containers. Okay. In the backend, your container D will ensure that your containers are running. Okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's the thing we have to understand okay if you re-attempt your uh, restarting your uh, docker service nothing will happen to your continuous okay and uh, in case of my updating my uh, docker version uh, in that case nothing so in that case always yeah nothing will happen there is a concept called live live restore which you have to enable for your docker daemon means your docker service we have to enable a, a parameter called live daemon live restore sorry 
So when you do that, even though if your Docker service is not available, your containers keeps running in the background. Okay, so those kind of things we have to use. So that is in upcoming classes. Then I can talk about that in, in clear. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. But that concept is there. We can we, you can search in Google like live restore for Docker. Okay. There will be one file which you have to add that particular parameter. So when you apply that and when you try to restart upgrade or something, whatever you do, it's like a downtime. Okay. So even though if your Docker service is down, mm -hmm. your containers keeps running in the background. What you can do, you can create a container and we can test it. So I'll show you that particular testing scenario, how to test it as well. Okay, to ensure that even though if your Docker service is not running, your containers are accessible. Okay, we will do that. Okay. Yeah. So now we have created a containers. Uh, we have seen some basic containers, how to create it and all. So first of all, let us try to understand uh, some important concept in Docker is nothing but uh, networking. Okay. So let's let's try to understand the networking concept. Before that, you have downloaded. Yesterday we have downloaded images. Everything fine. Uh, we have downloaded images and all. Everything went smooth because those are public images, right? Now let's say I have some private images in my repository. Private image in the sense it looks like this. If you have your Docker Hub account, it is so simple. It's not too tough. Okay. Let me sign in. Always everybody try to create your account here. I, I clicked on sign in right you have to do sign up because you are creating for the first time You can see here get started today with free So try to create an account why because we want to test something so for that you have to have this account. Okay, so my account is this So it's I've logged in successfully Okay, now you can see this image is a private image this you can see the tag over here Now let me try to pull that image and see what went wrong and let us see how to uh, fix that. Okay, so Now that image I think it is not there. Let me check okay, that, Those images are there actually let me try to remove docker image RM. Okay. So You can see already I have tested it actually to show you some documentation does it that there is it. Mm, I will remove all the unnecessary images. Yeah, another images. Okay. Okay. Now you can see these are the three images which I have. Okay. So here you you, you don't see anything uh, prefix or something like that, which means that it is downloaded from Docker.io repository. Docker.io slash library slash nginx colon latest. That is a full uh, what do you say uh, parameter of your image actually okay now here from here i want to download it okay so if you want to download it generally we give my name you can see my account name slash image name colon tag name okay tag in the sense whichever you want to download 20.04 latest or 16.04 it's up to you okay now if i try to download see what happens docker okay and then docker image sorry we can use image pool also but uh, as i told right the commands have been segregated sometimes you see my outputs in the documentation like docker pool sometimes you can see docker image pool as well both does the same thing actually that is older style this is a new style of executing the commands docker image pool let's say my repository name slash ubuntu is my image and the tag is 20.04 now you can see we are trying to pull this image see it has access denied it is telling you one statement that may require docker login or denied access request to the resource is denied okay so now what we have to do in order to solve this problem we have to log in means first i need to solve my authentication issue so how you can solve your authentication issue from cli there is a command called docker login it's all it's not only for docker okay we can use it for any sort of uh what do you say any sort of uh, uh to rip any sort of repository it's only not only for docker hub if you want to log into a specific repository as well we need to give see by default if you don't pass anything it will take this particular url to login okay so that's one thing you have to take care 
because that's the reason you have to give your server means that url if it is a github repository or azure registry or you have uh, uh, aws registry or gcp registry and all you have to give that gitlab registry so you have to give that url if you don't pass anything see that's the reason it is closed braces which means that if you don't pass anything you can see it took this url as a default docker hub okay so now let's give the username what i gave in the browser same thing if my username password is correct it will show you successful okay you can see it is successful and where this particular credentials have been stored okay in my system the credentials has to be stored somewhere right so that it will use this from now to download the private images from this repository okay so there you can see a statement here your password will be stored unencrypted in this particular file so that's the reason i will not catch this particular file it will have some token in this file actually that token is a reference point to your username and password to that particular repository okay so that's the reason i don't show that particular uh, uh, token actually this particular file output you can log in and you can see your output of this particular file okay now you can see the statement here the important thing is login successful for us okay now what i have to do now let me try to attempt to pull this private image simple right so that's the reason we have to test your authentication is done right now successfully which means that now it has to use this authentication credentials or a token to pull this image from that private repository you can see now it's attempting pull so no failures right now any questions yeah so they were so for how long uh, will these credentials be active one, one until you log out see yesterday i logged in uh, today i recalled that i i logged in but I, uh, yeah so if you see mine before showing you before showing you this actually i somewhere executed docker logout command yeah you can see here maybe you have not observed today but i executed this command just now okay which means that yesterday i logged in i forgot actually i uh, due to some work i just shut down my virtual machine i forgot to do, uh, do a logout but still this credentials are available so when you attempt a docker logout automatically it will remove the token from that particular file okay so until you execute docker logout command this credentials will be stored okay that is a statement you got the point what i'm saying yes yes okay. so now this image has been downloaded if you want to push that image you see always downloading the images if it is a public image no need of authentication if it is a private image we have to do an authentication okay this point is clear i guess but if you are trying to push image to the repository you have to authenticate first that is mandatory whether it is a public or private it is secondary but you have to authenticate and then you can push the image if that is not the case everybody will try to attempt to push to my repository right without authentication so that's a reason okay so you have to be careful with these statements two statements okay if it is a private it will ask for you for the credit okay if it is a public when you are downloading it doesn't ask you authentication but if you are trying to push it it will ask for your authentication okay now let us see how we can do this authentication let me log out now see this image is available right now in your local system local docker host machine right now okay i can create a container or whatever it is now let me do a logout docker logout done the credentials have been removed actually now it will be under docker home directory docker and then you can see yeah, config.json see here you will have your authentication details actually those has been removed from this file it is a json file this is how it looks here you will see your authentication token details but now it is removed okay now let's try to push image to my repository how to do that okay so first i will not build any image without building image i will try to clone the image some sample image to to push to my repository okay first of all let me remove some repositories which are unnecessary and then i will have this one 
I will remove this. It's not needed for me. So go to settings. Here, if you scroll down, delete repository. It will ask you a confirmation called. Give the image name. Alpine. It's asking you. Please type the name of the repository to confirm delete Alpine. Oh, I gave it. Which not accepting. Now it's highlighted. First, delete. Now this repository was removed. Okay. So now Docker. I will try to remove all the images. Uh, I will see all my containers are removed. Yeah. I will remove all my images. So how to remove all my images? I am trying to do a cleanup. Okay. In, if you execute this command, you will get only image ideas. Image ls hyphen qa. Okay. So this is the command which I will try to use in the loop. For i in this one. Okay. So do here nothing to stop before. You can directly give a force. Docker image rm hyphen f dollar i and then your images are then cleaned up okay done right so images have been cleaned up successfully now so let me try to yeah so if you execute docker image the less command you don't see a single image at all okay if you give, want to give hyphen a also you can give nothing is been okay so now let us try to attempt okay so now let's try to pull that i want to before pushing this image to the repository i want to first download some sample image from docker hub uh, open repository and then i want to push it to my repository let's see the difference okay docker pull alpine alpine is a base image which everybody uses for testing or for any development okay if you want to customize your image and all we use this particular alpine because it's a lightweight and secure you can see i have not passed any tag automatically it took this latest tag you can see how fast it is so docker image ls now this you can see the size 5.6 mb can you imagine the size 5.6 mb you can imagine how small it is okay which means that if you want any package you have to install if you want to execute certain commands and if that package is not installed you have to install it okay that's a small statement so now i cannot push this image to my repository sorry now the problem is i cannot push this image to my repository because my image if i want to push image it should be something like this name of a repository you can see here actually my account is this and slash repository is nginx hyphen task tag whatever you want but here i need to give this as a prefix now these images are looking as a different now let me try to clone with that name whatever i want okay so docker to do that docker uh cont image i think i already gave this in the repository i think you can go to this and you can go to the image section and if you go to uh images this and if you scroll down yeah pull from image from a specific repository i gave you some example login log out everything okay and then <clears throat> how to check image details that is inspect how to check image layers how to pull private image okay that is also one statement how to push uh, i think it is not written okay i'll make it here okay so this one i will try to add this in the documentation so to do that docker did i seriously have not done that let me cross it guys because sometimes i forgot actually let me see the images read me uh, the readme also i don't have it uh, image build nothing it's empty In actions pull is there but i think i don't have anything like push now ah, here it is already added in this documentation docker image actions dot md you can see here uh, this is the one you can see before pushing images to your repository you need to log into the account from cli and after that push the image to the existing repository so which means that this is the one actions okay yeah here you can see it yeah this is the one 
okay so this is how it is now so it is already available so no need to worry today yeah. <clears throat> first what you need to do is you need to clone with that name so docker contain sorry docker image tag we have a parameter called tag okay tag uh, alpine latest this is what i want to tag it to a name called my uh, my account slash i want to make it as same repository and then latest as a tag okay now you can see it is cloned now you have two images the same id you can see but the name you can see it okay now let's try to push now i can push it to my repository okay so to push it let's see what will happen push docker push okay it's preparing to push you can see it is denied okay so here what we need to do docker login again then now you can see it is successful okay now let's try to push it if authentication is successful it has to go forward it should not fail under preparing it's, yeah now you can see it's doing it awesome. now you can see it is successfully pushed and you got this short digest number and all now if you go to the browser and if you try to refresh it you will see a new repository called alpine you can see this is done just now okay so this is how it is got it any questions please no okay thank you always try to do a logout okay better Now this is done. So Docker images are available. Everything. So duplicate image. Let me try to remove it. It's no longer re needed now. Um, Alpine, not Alpine. Sorry. I will remove my image. Okay. Done. So now I have only one image right. So we have created containers, images. Everything is done. Basic containers. We have seen images. How to use, utilize it. Private images public images from a specific repository everything was done okay in containers we have seen how to access your containers create containers okay how to uh, log into the container we have seen that okay so and then we have seen something like uh, how to clean up a container how to clean up images so these are the basic things which are covered so that you can now ready to deploy some applications into your uh, container level okay you can now you can uh, uh, like initiate the containers okay so today first of all let us try to deploy Jenkins first and foremost attempt right now because I already discussed about uh, what do you say port forwarding so that is enough for me to go forward and deploy Jenkins dashboard just I will show you the Jenkins dashboard login and then how to configure it okay so let's do that docker for that we will be using an image called jenkins slash jenkins corner lts okay uh you can search for that jenkins so jenkins is a cicd tool so i will brief i will be explaining more about that in the coming classes but today i'll just show you how to deploy it uh, here you can see in the description they might show you some versions yeah latest jenkins colon jenkins slash colon lts okay so docker i don't have the image see what mm -hmm. container will say i'm directly trying to create a container though the image is not downloaded so will that go forward or not any any inputs if i don't have image and if i try to create a container using that image will that go forward or not yes. uh, yeah it will work uh, it will uh, yeah. so yes it will go forward it will download the image first and then it will create a container for me okay so no need to worry if the image is also not available right now in your system okay so docker container uh, run hyphen t 
Okay, hyphen hyphen name. Jenkins hyphen hyphen host name. Um, PLCD server. Okay, Jenkins. Okay, and then port forwarding is important. I want to bind 8090 port number to 8080 port number in Jenkins. Why? Because Jenkins was designed on Jenkins will be running on Java. Okay, so Java is a main uh, uh, service which will be utilized uh, to run your Jenkins scripts. Okay, so you have to you already know that Jen, uh, Jen, Java will be run, listening on a port number called 8080. Okay, so who are working on Java applications, right? Design and all, they know it. Okay, generally web applications like Nginx and uh, normal HTML, Gen uh, Nginx and Apache will be listening on 80 port number. Java will be listening on 8080 port number. Okay, so done. Tomcat, what we want. Tomcat and so now 8090. So on the 8090 port number on my Docker host machine, I'm binding it to 8080. Okay, because I need to access dashboard. So that's the reason. Because Creating a container doesn't mean that your Jenkins is configured. We have to configure the Jenkins as well. Okay, so Jenkins. I'm not giving any other parameters. Call an LTS. LTS is a recommended one. Why? Because long-term service. The release will be available for long-term support. Okay. Now you can see unable to find image locally. So it will download the image and then it will create a container for me. You can see the number of layers. The image layer is too big because it has so many what do you say so many things actually sorry see it depends if you don't want to see not all the applications we access from outside right Say, let's yeah. say you are designing some client applications. Client will access only a dashboard. He doesn't need any other backend. See, if all applications to be accessible from dashboard. Let's say you have front end application like web applications, and then you have middleware application, and then you have a database in the backend. So, how many applications you can access? Only one dashboard. That's it. Only those applications we have to expose. Other applications can communicate each other with internal private IP, right? That's how yeah. Yeah. So you have to make a decision whether to do or not whether to expose it or not Is there a purpose or not? So when you uh, work with the team then you will they will ask you these kind of questions actually So why you are trying to expose you have to give a justification to it. Okay yeah. It's not that easy to go live right After this, uh, creating this Jenkins dashboard and all, we will wind up for today. And tomorrow we will see something in depth on this. Okay. Tomorrow we'll be starting with Docker networking. Okay. Now you can see images downloaded successfully, and container is also created successfully. Okay. And you can see your container is running in the background. Now I will go to the browser. There are two port numbers, 50,000 port number, and you can see 8080 port number for the Jenkins. Okay, 8080, and then we have uh, 50,000. 50,000 is for slaves to communicate, 8080 is for dashboard access. Okay, so now go to the browser. I will try to give 192.168.0.50 colon 89. Oh, why it is doing this? So I think I need to clean up my caching. No, not needed. Now we have to configure the Jenkins. We have created only Jenkins container, but we haven't configured the Jenkins dashboard. So let us try to do that. You can see it is asking you to configure your Jenkins dashboard initial user and all. First, your Jenkins will give you a initial admin password. That is a password we have to use in order to go forward and configure your Jenkins dashboard until your admin user is created. Okay. So how to get that particular password? So you can see the logs of your container or you need to log into the container. So try to see the logs container logs. You can also give Docker logs actually, but let us practice a new method. You can see the password here. Okay, take this password or you can go to the container and you can get the password from here. 
all the jenkins related information will be stored under this particular directory inside the containers actually but in a normal virtual machines and normal bare metal servers if you try to install jenkins it will be under var lib jenkins okay so don't get confused so copy that paste it here this is a in initial admin password this file will get removed let me show you xcc hyphen ti jenkins bash okay go to the var jenkins home secrets uh, initial admin password now this password i can get it from this file as well okay now this file will be removed automatically when i will tell you continue now we have to install the plugins these plugins are needed in order to do certain actions in the ci cd workflow all the plugins which are mandatory you have to install and when you're working on docker or kubernetes if you want to do some ci cd operations then those plugins also you have to install but for now it will install only suggested plugins which are needed to log into your jenkins dashboard so i will install suggested plugins because i don't know what plugins to be installed mandatory plugins so instead of taking a risk i will go with the first attempt first one so click on that automatically you can see these are the plugins and it will also have its dependency plugins as well which will get installed okay so let us wait until that is done I will mute until this is done. It takes one or two minutes actually. Hi, Sudhir. Yeah. Yes, please. Yeah, you are saying something? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, can you just again explain it regarding the hostname parameter uh, that you have given? Because when you start see, hostname is something. You have given a... See, hostname is something where, see, there are two things. If you want to reach to your system, okay, generally we assign a hostname okay hostname or ip address yeah ip address is hard to remember right see i don't know how many systems let's say you are working in an organization and your organization is having so many servers to communicate sometimes it is hard to remember this ip address one into two some will have 10 series or something like that yeah. so yeah. instead of remembering yeah. this names uh, instead of remembering this ip yeah. address you will yeah. assign a name to your system Sorry. Okay, so you mean to say that you can reach to that container using that host name that we have given? If it is binded, yes. If it is registered, means if you added a host entry with that IP address and the domain name, you can reach to the domain name as well, host name as well. Yeah, yes, we can do it. Uh, okay. It is not only needed with IP address. Okay. Only thing what you need to do, what you have to do, take the IP address of your container. Okay. Let me log out from here. Take the container IP address and the host name and add it in the host etc slash etc host file in your Docker host machine. Then you can communicate. Okay. What is your uh, CI CD Jenkins server, right? Let me take this. So I know that it will have one 172 series IP address. So slash etc host file. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Oh, you got the point. So it's done now after creating this admin user right this file will get removed okay see that 
we have this file exist okay let me create it so we're so it's up to you i will give same username as a password some dummy email okay and save and continue now after doing this now you see no such file or directory because this file will get removed in the back end okay save and finish start using jenkins that's it we are done with the jenkins okay this is how it looks your jenkins dashboard okay from this is the where people everybody will use in production or wherever you see this is how the dashboard looks okay they might change the logos companies some companies might change the logos and they will add their own logos actually that is not our concern right so our concentration is how to use csd operations from jenkins okay that's all for today you can see the jenkins version for lts which we have used 2.289.3 okay major version is 2 minor version is 289 and the patch version is .3 okay so let me log out yes sorry your voice is breaking uh, i don't know whether it is for me or for everyone yeah and so the just one small question regarding this yes. jenkins have you covered the complete thing or only cd part you have covered here I have not started anything actually for Jenkins. I just shown how to deploy your Jenkins in a container level. That's it. I have not attempted yeah, yeah. anything. Okay. okay. You are you are seeing this right on live. Yes. I have not yes. done anything I'm, apart from this. Yes, yes. I am seeing that one, but uh, pipeline, as CI/CD pipeline, and pipeline. everything. I am not sure as of now. Yeah. As for our requirement, we are got the image from the Jenkins, right? So. Uh, have you covered that point in the practical scenarios? I didn't get you. Come again. Reframe the statement. I didn't get you. Once we developed the image. Um, we have not developed. We have used the existing image from the Docker Hub repository. Not existing image. And just we complete the uh, dot war or star file. Once we complete that file, we deploy into the Docker or Kubernetes, right? Have you covered that uh -huh. practical scenarios? How to deploy those things in the Docker? Where? Where I want to deploy? Where you want to deploy? In Docker or Kubernetes? See, we are right now. Now we are discussing about Docker. Why you are coming across Kubernetes? Uh, whatever, Docker or Docker. I just shown you right how to how to download the existing image and how to create a container. And deploy your Jenkins. That's what I've shown you, right? You are seeing it, right? Whatever I've shown you right now. Yes. yes. 